What's going on? What's going on? Another episode of Real Conversation Podcast. We got a very special guest today. Um, goes by the name of Jeremiah King. We're going to discuss a few things as far as his upbringing and him being a pillar in his community. And we also going to discuss organizations he's involved in, such as Black Org 219, um, we engage in this talk show, Black Cast. So coming all the way from Gary, Indiana, I want y'all to give it up for my man, Jeremiah King. What's happening, brother? What's, happening? What's up with you, bro? What's going on with you, man? How you feeling? I'm chilling, brother. Survive with peace. That's what's up. That's what's up. So uh, can you tell the people uh, where you from, your name, and uh, you know your, your uh, upbringing? Yes, sir. Jeremiah King. I'm from Gary, Indiana, born and raised. Um, grew up on the west side, Delaney Projects. Um, attended school, high school, um, freshman year at La Wallace. Then I went to uh, 21st Century Charter School. I graduated, then attended um, Central State University um, in Ohio, HBCU in Ohio. Um, then when I came home, or or basically when I while at school, senior year how i ended up back in gary um was kind of kind of just a, a, a what they call an epiphany that i had like a week before graduation i was sitting in my room just trying to figure out if i was gonna come back to gary come back home um and then i reflected on my name and i remember before my grandma passed she told me to read the book of jeremiah um and in, in that book um, one of the things that stood out to me was God basically telling Jeremiah to go back home, right? And he he was going to take care of everything else, go back home, and we go figure everything else out, just listen to my voice and stuff like that. So uh, and while in college, I developed the love for my city. So that the, those two things kind of got me back in Gary. Um, so then, and then I, my first year back, I started teaching and started to look for answers to the questions that I had as it related to why the city looked the way it looked, why things weren't happening the way that they happened everywhere else and, and things like that. To to and that that drove me to start my own nonprofit, Black um Builded Leaders, Advancing Community Knowledge, where our mission was basically to in, increase civic engagement throughout the city, um, which is still active now, which is that's the in connection to the the black chat, the interviews that I did with um other community leaders um and political candidates to try to keep the public informed um and things like that so i, I ever since then i've been active in my community i'm the um on the redevelopment commission in, in the city of gary I mean, if you know what the redevelopment commission does we we basically um is the board or the government body that approves um any selling or buying of land in the city of gary so i do that i'm the vice chair for the um, young Dems for Congressional District 1. Um, and yeah, so I'm the president of the Urban League Young Professionals as well. So all those things connect because I want to get people engaged. Okay, okay, that's what's up. So um, could you tell us more of your political background? Um, I, I wouldn't even say I have a political background per se, but I, I'm civically engaged. I'm knowledgeable of what's going on. So um Coming home and I came home in 2016. That's when I graduated college. Um, and before I got home, I reached out to basically every politician that I could get a hold of. You know what I'm saying? Um, Cause my major was political science. So that's where I gained an understanding of government and things like that. So I reached out to, I ain't gonna say no names and a bunch of those names that I ain't gonna say didn't, didn't get back to me either. So um, you know what I'm saying? So. Um, <laughs> So I got I was in, introduced to the young professionals um, in 2016 when I came home that summer through uh, Mayor Karen Freeman Wilson. She uh, connected me with the president at the time. Um, I forgot his name, but uh, she connected me with him. That was my first little set of being engaged. Um, soon after I came home, the young professionals kind of disbanded, like they disappeared for whatever reason. Um, so I kind of had to figure it out on my own. So that's when I started my own nonprofit. Um, and essentially the, the goal originally was just to educate people on how to be um, 
knowledgeable of, of self, like being self-aware and things like that. Um, but so with, with that, I thought came everything else that included being civically engaged. But now the focus is kind of just being civically engaged. And from there, um, what I was able to do with my nonprofit, it kind of created a name to where I um, just simply applied to be on the Redevelopment Commission. And that was kind of like my introduction to politics, along with meeting some some mentors along the way that actually replied when I called or uh, looked to kind of serve as a mentor to me. And they still do um, to this day. OK, OK, that's what's up. All right. Um, with you breaking that down. I would just want to know, like, what drives you to want to work with the community and um, help out your hometown? Well, both our hometowns and mm. like what drives you just what, what gives you that fuel, that courage, that that spirit? Um, but p part of it, uh, I think it originated in that scripture uh, when I'm at when I was still at school and I, I just read the book of Jeremiah again. And I think that, that it kind of made me think that it was my calling, like this is what I'm supposed to do. Um, so so that that's part of it. And the other half is, is that I love our people. Um, I, I, lo I love black people, man. Like that, that's that's um, I find. I find joy in seeing us be successful or or seeing us be the, the anchor to, you know, successful plans and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So it's. It, it, it's a combination of those two things um and then i all i'm inspired by uh people that were able to like lay the foundation for those movements that that you know led to change so that those are like the inspirations you know what i'm saying like the malcolm x's the marcus garvey's um you know those two are the main people the black panther party like i tried to make my nonprofit be a reflection of the Black Panther Party, like down to a T type of thing. So, um, but yeah, so, and I think we probably will talk about that a little bit more, but um, like the the challenges are a little difficult to identify or how to attack those challenges are is a little difficult now. And then when it was just blatant racism and stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, a combination of those things serve as like inspiration for me. Okay, that's what's up, I respect that. So could you tell us more about the um Black Org 219? Yeah, so so like I said Black was started in response to me having questions um that weren't being addressed and um wanting the people to understand how they can make a change. Um so originally, like I said, it was to um it was to educate people of themselves type of thing. So if you looked at the logo, it's like those two black faces, like they look like little kids, but uh, we were intentional with making them look like black faces, like a black boy and a black girl. So that that, that was the origin of it. Um, but as we went on and we, we uh, and I say we, because I started with somebody else. I, it was originally two of us and we kind of just had creative differences and where we wanted to go in the direction of it. Um, so I kind of just kept the name and everything and we, you know, when our separate ways, but since I've taken over, um, we've been heavily engaged in the community as it relates to voter uh, voter registration. And that was the We Engage campaign that was you talked about. That was my first grant that I ever got. Um, so yeah, now I essentially focus on community engagement and educating the public, especially around times like now when it when it's time for those local uh, um, those local um, elections. Because I feel like those are kind of those are the most um, important to me. Um, so okay. I try to make sure everybody participates and has the tools to be able to participate. So that's kind of what what Black's focus is, especially around this time. OK, I'm happy you brought up um, voting locally because I also wanted your opinion or your uh, advice to the, the generation under us. Like, why is it important to vote locally and just be um, more engaged in your communities um i think that's a great question because being in education like it's something that i got like when i was teaching um like I, my first year of teaching i taught sophomores um u.s history so trying to make all of that boring stuff like like relevant to them was kind of the, the challenge and that's what basically made make teachers teachers so what i told them was i just starting with identifying an issue or a concern that you may have. And I was always able to connect it back to, to politics or 
you know, the constitution even, or, you know, what was going on in the city mayor, what the mayor should and shouldn't be doing, stuff like that. So I was able to help them direct their energy towards making a change because they identified a specific issue or a set of issues that always comes back to um, politics or being engaged. So I would have them start with that. What 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 do you see wrong around you? You know what I'm saying? One of the projects that I did was like, um, like uh, when I, I also taught fourth grade. So when I was teaching fourth grade, it's like, just draw me a picture of what you see when you're on your way to school, whether you drive, whether you walk or whatever. And then Gary, you gonna see a lot of abandoned shit. <laughs> like you gonna see a bunch of, you know what I'm saying? A, a bunch of stuff that, um, is not inspiring, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I remember somebody talking about it looks like when they get get to Gary, like it's like a black cloud over it type of thing. And and and, right. and with that being said, we can connect all that back to politics. Fourth graders didn't even know that they were being civically engaged by participating in that activity. You know what I'm saying? So just being always able to make that connection to concerns that they may have, like that's that's where we would start. Okay, that's cool. I, uh... I definitely respect that. So can you tell us more about your, um, you know, the talk show, Black Chat, and how did you come up with the whole idea and how long it's been going on and where can the people find it? Mm, for sure. So Black Chat was, a, was an idea that I had in, what, 2019, the last municipal election. So if you go back, like, on my Facebook and stuff like that, you will see us just posting pictures with candidates um after the interview so instead of recording it initially um because that was the first our first year doing it i i kind of didn't know what i wanted it to look like um and then also i didn't have the funds to do what i did this time uh, we what we did was we interviewed the, the candidate um all in response to like people saying like i don't even know who's running or what they're running for like who, who are these people blah 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 and then this is around the time people just start popping up out of nowhere anyway so to combat that, I wanted to kind of serve as the voice for, for our age group. So we interviewed them, asked them questions that we thought were important. Um, and then we kind of shared the highlights, but then I allowed the candidate to give a quote of how they would want to wrap up the conversation at the end. And that's what I would post when I posted the picture. Um, so that that turned into me doing actually doing a newsletter. I did a newsletter called um, Black Print. Um, and in that newsletter, I took... Um, the pillars of my nonprofit, which is education, civic engagement, financial literacy, um, and education. And I made a newsletter. So like the education piece will talk about something that seniors should be doing in preparation for life after high school. Um, and I collaborated with Katisha Tony on that part of it uh, from Coats Inc. Then for the financial literacy piece, it was always some, um, uh, some uh, recommendations for stocks you should look at. You know what I'm saying? And then for um, the civic engagement piece, I wrote a segment called Politics as Usual, whereas I talked about specific, um, what it was, something that was specifically going on in the community related to politics and giving my opinion, but it was also important for me to give facts so people could think for themselves. Um, so, for example, I talked about the referendum that, that they did for the schools. Um, it was a lot of people that were against the referendum for just goofy reasons, of course, and forgetting the fact that the kids were the primary focus and how we even got to the point to where the state took over the schools in the first place. Um, uh, the newsletter is still posted on the website, which is blackorg219.org. So you can go look, I did three issues of that before, like, and I do all this by myself, right? So I did three issues of that before it became like too much. Um, and I'm gonna start that back up this year too. But before it became too much, I did three issues just like that. Um, so that from that, from those just regular conversations to me posting it on um, Facebook to the to the newsletter, then that led to me um, doing it with every election. So I was just going to do a local uh, with the local elections in Gary, but I ended up doing it with the congressional race, too, where this time I did it on Facebook Live. So it's still on our Facebook pages, um, Black Org 219 on the Facebook. Um, and then uh, it's on my my regular Facebook page as well. So from that, I wrote a grant and actually got the funding to do it how you see it today, where I, um, and then this was my, that was my first time doing it like that because now I could, and this is what it transformed to. But all of that was in combat to people saying they didn't know who 
to vote for. They didn't know who these people were. They didn't know what they were running for. They didn't know when election time was. They didn't know X, Y. So this, this, all of that was just in combat of that. So I reach out to, to candidates that I'm interested in speaking to. Um, I reach out to those candidates as well as their um, opponents because I am a nonpartisan um, non nonprofit. So I, I can't endorse them. But as an as an individual, I can give my opinion afterwards. So I, I got to be nonpartisan. So I reach out to each candidate. Um, some decline, some you know want to come through. So the ones that accept the invitation, you know, you you we get that interview where I try to ask questions that they don't normally add, uh, answer or they are not normally asked for the sake of politics. Um, and then also questions that matter to the demographic that I was trying to reach, which was that uh, millennial. Um, age grouping in right after us. Okay, okay, that's what's up. So I know you, I know you're very busy. You got a lot of things going on. So before you head out, um, I just, I would just want some um, inspiring words from you, as um, as if you're talking to the youth on why, like, even though we just touched on the topic a little bit, like for the youth to like people that look like us that come from inner cities like Gary all around America and around the world uh eventually well yeah. potentially um what would you tell them like you know because nowadays even myself I was one of those type of kids like oh this don't pertain to me the government is so many uh it's so many tricks to the trade and you know mm -hmm. they don't really care about the the local or the 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 smaller group what would be your um words to them i would say so like even if you know people if you feel like um if you feel that way i would challenge them to ask what they've done to in response to the issue that they identified um what steps are they taking to try to fix this issue um do they understand the pro i would i would advise them to pay attention in their social studies class because all of the answers really lie there for the most part um and then I will also encourage them to um, be themselves in addressing the issues that they want, because one of the issues that I'm running to now is that it's just like the title of my thing is politics as usual, man. There's a there's a look, there's a sound, there's a, 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 a protocol that goes along with being accepted from people that you just said don't care about you. You know what I'm saying? So I would tell them, don't worry about that. Be yourself and address the issue that you want and that's kind of the, the role that i took um so my that's usually how conversations go with them they complain i ask them you know what i'm saying what have you done do you know what to do what would you like to see done um and if not you then who you know what i'm saying if not if not now then when you know what i'm saying it's, it's a quote i always say in response to like that frustration between trying to bridge that gap between generations is um I heard it, somebody says from like African proverb, they say the elders know the way, but the youth can get us there. Um, okay. And then so so is that quote. And then it's uh, it's one that I heard like uh, CeeLo Green say, he say everybody is somebody, but don't nobody want to be themselves. Hmm. Right. So uh, so just remove all the extra stuff, be yourself and address the issues that you see um, important. And, and, you know, that's that's usually how the conversation goes. Okay, man. With that being said, I appreciate you responding, us scheduling this uh podcast and coming together as black men and putting a positive narrative out there. Um to the people that want to tap in with you behind the scenes, could you let them know um where to find you and could you get a podcast a shout out? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh if you you, you want to connect with me, my um Instagram is Jeremiah King one. Um, you can reach out to me via Instagram. My Facebook is my name, Jeremiah King. Black's uh, organization page is Black Org 219 on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. The website, blackorg219.org. Um, and then for like the young professional stuff, UNLYPNWI is for the young professionals. Um, so, yeah, and then shout out to Real Convos Podcast, man, for, for, um, initiating these type of conversations and making them, uh, the viewers aware um, that that things can be different if they, you know, willing to just have those conversations and, and put some effort in. 
That's what's up, man. I respect you, man. We're going to holler behind the scenes. Much love, bro. Right on, brother. Peace. All right. For sure. For sure. There you have it, man. That was our special guest for the night. Make sure y'all like, share, and subscribe. This will be on YouTube. This will be on um, all the podcast platforms from Apple to Spotify, et cetera. And um, I appreciate y'all. Just thank y'all for the opportunity and just listen to us. Tell it how it is. You know, you go tap into my boy, Jeremiah King. With that being said, we gone. Much love.